1817 climbing to avoid traffic conflict with Caribbean Air Wind. Negative JetBlue 1817 climbing to avoid traffic conflict with Caribbean Airways, crossing final two miles ahead of us right now. What's up, guys, and welcome to ATC Point of View. If you are new to the channel, my name is Lex, and thanks for joining me. If you're interested in supporting this channel, check out my store down below where for a limited amount of time, you'll be able to get 10% off your purchase by using the code Lift Downwind. But this incident happened at Piarco International Airport, located in Trinidad and Tobago. So a JetBlue flight, along with a Caribbean Airlines flight, were both inbound on different approaches to the same runway, but they were set up on converging courses. So let's check it out. 1817, contact 1181. Decimal 1, JetBlue 1817. OPR code tower, JetBlue 1817, uh, 4109 miles from Shark, ILS 10. JetBlue 1817, continue approach, report next uh, 4 mile final. It will continue approach and report 4 mile final, JetBlue 1817. Today for the approach, Governor 521. 521, Sega. Continue flight over 6 0, we say 3 on number 3. Governor 521, Sega 41, and say 3 on number 3. Just me from Napco. 4.7 miles from Napco. The report your distance up Three six miles, Prevalence 1515. Five report your position now. 521 over Napco. Maintain 41 Traffic. Step 1817, confirm position. Step 1817 over Shark. And confirm altitude. Step 1817, 4100. Continue your approach. Continue, Step 1817. Step 1817, there's the traffic. Slam and maintain of the jurisdiction of the traffic by Shark is just on the 41. Have a nice Negative, is he coming towards the airport? On long time, I'll listen. The climb to flight of a 6 is covered on 521. Blue 1817, we see traffic at uh, 11 o'clock, same altitude. Blue 1817, 4,000 feet, uh, starting descent on the ILS. Got the uh, Caribbean 521 ahead of us, we're climbing. The other traffic is also climbing to trim. Is, is it for that reason or no? It seems like he's also climbing. JetBlue 1817, confirm your descent into the field. Negative, JetBlue 1817, climbing to avoid traffic conflict with Caribbean Airways, crossing final two miles ahead of us right now. 1817, contact CRPO, approach on 124.0. 124.0, JetBlue 1817. Go JetBlue 1817, back with you. We are 5,600 feet, uh, 10 miles from the runway with Caribbean Air in sight. Two o'clock, same altitude. Are you pro are you proceeding southbound? Point one seven is still proceeding on course up the runway, but level at five thousand six hundred. Maintaining five zero seven point six miles towards Popo Zero. Maintaining five zero six zero seven point six miles towards Popo Zero. Traffic is behind you. We won't be able to see him. Blue one eight one seven, sit in that. For Jet Blue one eight one seven. Your intention. Simply 1817, we are now too high to land. Request uh, a right 360 to rejoin final. You want to run me heading? I mean, seeing up a 060. Way heading to 060, Jetblue 1817. 10521. Understand from you are approaching the VOR now? Primitive. Roger. I'm not checking over the VOR. Make a right soon and proceed to shot. You know where the VR right turn the right shock, driven on 521. Driven on 1517, question 1515, maintain over 070. Maintain 5170, driven on 1515. Good driven on 521, off the purpose, they request the right analog to the R never say 10. Give me that analog. Okay. On the, it could be the right turn the right analog, and the center 41 is with feet. And the analog could be. 
So a question that some of you may be asking is why don't the air traffic controllers know the precise location of these aircraft? Well, that's because this facility does not have radar. And when air traffic control services are being provided without the use of a radar, it's called non-radar. Thus, air traffic controllers will separate these aircraft by using speed control, altitude, and also having pilots report their position on different fixes on published routes. The pilots in this incident are doing non-radar approaches, thus they're being sent to the published fixes on their respective approaches. Piarco International Airport is right over here, and runway 10 is in use. JetBlue 1817 is inbound from the west, setting up for an ILS approach to runway 10. So he's direct shark, which is the initial approach fix to join the approach. Caribbean 521 is inbound from the north, doing the RNAV GPS approach to runway 10. So they're direct NAPCO, and then they'll fly the approach as shown here. So one of the main problems here is the fact that the radar controller had already switched JetBlue 1817 to the tower controller so far out. And without a radar to monitor JetBlue's position and altitude, he has to keep calling the tower controller to have him ask JetBlue, and then the tower controller will call him back and relay that information. So that takes a lot of time, and every second matters. But fortunately, modern aircraft have what's called TCAST, which stands for Traffic Alert Collision Avoidance System. Its main purpose is to reduce the risk of mid-air collisions between aircraft. We hear the Caribbean flight ask about traffic. The approach controller tells her about the JetBlue flight that's currently over Shark and then asks her if she has him in sight. But the Caribbean pilot doesn't have JetBlue in sight. So the air traffic controller tells her to climb to flight level 060 with the intent being for her to get sent around and get resequenced behind JetBlue for the approach. But the air traffic controller does not communicate that with her. So I think that the pilot still thinks she's number one. So that may be the reason why it did seem that Caribbean 521 did not start their climb when initially instructed by the air traffic controller, or maybe she was responding to a TCAS resolution advisory. In the meantime, JetBlue is also informing the tire controller about traffic that he's observed from his TCAS as well. It seems like the two air traffic controllers communicated with one another and had a common understanding that JetBlue would be number one and the Caribbean flight was getting sent around but none of the air traffic controllers communicated that plan with the pilots, which made it worse. Thus, JetBlue decides to initiate a go-around and starts climbing. But while that's going on, the Caribbean Airlines pilot becomes more confused because she sees them climbing as well. So now they're both at the same altitude. The Caribbean Airlines pilot still doesn't have JetBlue in sight and flies right through the final approach course right in front of him. Fortunately, the JetBlue pilot is able to get them in sight and is able to also avoid a disastrous situation. But now he's too high for his approach, so the tire controller sends him back to the departure controller. I think that the two main contributing factors in this incident were poor traffic management and bad communications by the air traffic controllers. Firstly, the radar controller should have never switched that JetBlue flight to the tower so early, especially when he knows that he has the Caribbean flight inbound that's doing a different type of approach to the same runway. If he still had communications with, with JetBlue, it would have been a lot easier because he'd be able to communicate directly with the pilot, find out his position relative to, to the Caribbean flight and see if uh, those two approaches were gonna work. And if not, he'd be able to just give one of them a go around while the other aircraft safely make their approach. And next, I think that the radar controller should have been more clear with the Caribbean flight and letting her know that the uh, climb to uh, flight level 060 was for a go around because she was not aware or she wasn't certain that um, she was going around or not, or she still thought that she was number one to the airport. And I think that the tire controller should have done the same. He should have relayed that information to JetBlue to let him know that that traffic is climbing to 6,000 feet and they'd be go going around and JetBlue was number one for the runway. Furthermore, it's a shame that airports like this are prioritizing money as opposed to safety. There's no reason why for an airport that gets a lot of air carrier operations on a regular basis to not have a radar this day and age. Just because something has worked for so long, it doesn't mean that it's safe. But guys, share your thoughts down below in the comments. Let me know what you thought about the incident. If you haven't done so already, hit the like and subscribe button. And as always, peace.